See, when I get to the point of understanding the will of God for my life, I need to make sure that I'm talking to somebody that don't have my mind. But on the opposite hand, we have our Christ. He, has, he bears none of these characteristics. He is life. He is love. He is wonderful. He is everything opposite of Leviathan. So we need to make sure that we have the right king over our lives. We need to make sure who's your dad. You're doing something is your faith. And so the more you do it, the more you get, the more the substance of that increases. And so the more it increases, the more the manifestation comes in your body. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you all so very much. Hey, look, this is Bishop R.S. Walker and Prophet Joan H. Rivera. And we're coming to you right from the uh, studio of uh, Bishop R.S. Walker Ministries. And we are really, really excited about what God is doing, what God has done, and what God shall do. Glory to God as we prepare for another upcoming an exciting year of uh, School of the Prophets, which will be starting on April 23rd. Yes, that's, uh, that's coming up real soon. You owe it to yourself to make sure that you're registered uh, for that class. We're teaching out of my new book, uh, Foundations of Prophetic Maturity. That book is hot on the press. It is right on the press right now. It will be showing up, glory to God, on Tuesday. Uh, and we'll bring it directly to class. You're still going to feel the heat on the pages. Glory to God. Now, we have with us on today uh, Prophet Joan Rivera, uh, a, former, uh, uh, a former student of the School of the Prophets. And we're really excited about what God has been doing in her life. And we just wanted to just kind of get together, identify what God is doing in her life, what God has been doing. Uh, and where she actually came from, glory to God. And we're really excited about this. So God's been uh, just so good to you. He's been good to us here at uh, Bishop Arts Walker Ministries, uh, School of the Prophets. Uh, why, why, don't you, why don't you just greet the people for a minute or so, and we'll jump right into what we're going to talk about. Well, hello, everybody. I'm excited to be here. Um, to be here to tell you about my journey into coming, up into becoming a prophet, and it Amen. was and it was through this school that I found out who I was and who I am and who I am becoming. Hallelujah. I will be forever grateful for the training that I received here. I went through 147 weeks of training, which is a little over three years, 21 weeks each. And I'm still learning. Wow. I'm thinking about coming back to this next class. Amen. To stay connected. You never can think you, you have arrived because there's so much to God to know. We're excited about what God is doing with this great woman of God. And, you know, and God is uh, really, he's done so, something so powerful, so powerful in her life. And I'm telling you that as we engage in this next season, we're going to see the hand of God move like never before. Now, when uh, initially when you started in the class, uh, we were talking about, uh, we were uh, just creating our our first book which was raising prophets of character yes. um we've been we, we were creating our first book uh uh creating prophet uh, i'm sorry raising prophets of uh character That's right. and um and really at that particular point you guys were such a tremendous blessing because you you were one of the greatest classes that we had and uh, just such a tremendous blessing as we develop, as we develop that. Now, now tell us, tell us what was your experience? Now, first of all, what year were you here 
uh, at uh, uh, the School of the Prophets? It was September 2002. And what had happened was how I even got here, I heard you on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I had previously had an encounter where it was told to me that I was a prophet. Mm -hmm. And I said to God, I don't even know what that means. What is a prophet? I need to be taught what a prophet is. So that's when I heard you on the radio. It was a Friday night. I'll never <laughs> forget. And you was talking about the school of the prophets. And, and it quickened in my spirit. I said, and I wrote down the information. And then I lost it. Uh -huh. And I said, God, if I'm supposed to go there, let me hear it again. Mm -hmm. So a few days later or so, I heard it again. Then that's what I made the call mm -hmm. at that time. And, and she, I told her how I came into knowing who I was. And she said, well, it, it would you know, appear that you are a prophet, but you need to be taught. So she said, you need to come down and see what the school is all about and see what we teach. And then the thing that I liked about it was she said, you need to get permission from your, from your church. Let them know where you're coming. So I came down and, and found out what the school's all about. I never forget, when I walked in the door, I cried the whole time. And you said to me, why are you crying? But I couldn't stop crying. You know, it was like I was overwhelmed, you know, with <laughs> being told who I was and, and God telling me also, because he did say to me, I went home, it was just before I came down here, after I was told I was a prophet, and he said the words to me, thou art my prophet. Are you ready to follow me? Wow, he said, thou art my prophet. Thou art are you what, my Are you ready prophet. Are to you follow Are you ready me? to follow me? Well, you know, that's interesting because one of the mm -hmm. challenges in a, uh, with a lot of people mm -hmm. is that they want, to, they want God to uh, speak to them regarding their call, mm -hmm. but one of the challenges, one of the challenges is mm -hmm. they never begin to pursue mm -hmm. what God is uh, actually doing at that particular time in their life, and as a result, God is never able to really speak to their purpose or speak to their destiny because they have never they have never even started with the initial uh, uh, with the the initial even uh, uh, suspicion that they may be called mm -hmm. to do something for God mm -hmm. and so so God no okay so now you came to uh, maybe the uh, the second or the third class mm -hmm. uh, that we did right here in Waldorf and we've been in Waldorf. Uh, really doing these classes yeah. every ever yes. since, and yeah. now the classes have begun to move from city to city, uh, from mm -hmm. state to state, and glory to God. Right now, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Cynthia White, who's one, uh, part of our staff, is right now in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, setting up for our next mm -hmm. School of the Prophets that will be, uh, that will be in Baton Rouge. Uh, so we're looking, we're looking forward to that. While at the same time, uh, the rest of our staff are right here in Waldorf getting this class ready mm -hmm. for the 23rd, and we're excited about that. Now, tell me, what is it that, uh, uh, how is it that this, that this school has really impacted uh, your life? How, how, how has it really impacted your life? What is it, what is it meant to you uh, now that you have completed uh, what, about seven years? Seven sessions, 21 weeks each. That was 147 weeks of training. Wow. So 147 weeks of training. Yeah. Now, how has that impacted your life now that, now that God has uh, uh, released you? As a matter of fact, your pastor, uh, your pastor, your bishop, uh, uh, released you into uh, uh, to do what God has called you to do as a prophet. Now, how has the school impacted you uh, in that area? The school has impacted me and is impacting me right Praise to God. this day. It taught me about the making of a prophet, the touching of a prophet, the maturity of the prophet, going into the wilderness, going to the schools, the rejection of the prophet, about prophetic depression, the climates, the seasons. 
taught wow. me how to stand regardless in spite of. It taught me that you have to be a worshiper. A prophet has to live in the mind of God. I'll never forget when you told uh-huh. him that. A prophet has to live in the mind of God. Mm-hmm. And in order to do that, you have to be a worshiper of yes. the living God. And you have to... You have to feed the word, because you, you said to us back then, it's only the word that backs a prophet up. <coughs> you know, and you have to eat large amounts of the word. Uh-huh. I never forget that. And you taught us how to adapt and overcome like a good soldier. Wow. And we don't have an excuse to not <coughs> do and go and be what God said to do when he said to do it, and how we're not responsible for what to say, we have to say it, but we're not responsible for how it is received. You That's taught right. us how to how to how how to not to be overzealous, how to wait, how to how to hear sometimes, and you don't hear, you don't see and, and say all the time. Sometimes you see and pray. He taught us how to grow up in the things of God, and it is that stability that has kept me right to this day, and has wow. birthed me right into my destiny, which is prophetic worship. And that, that he called me to teach. Wow. So he's called you to teach prophetic worship, mm-hmm. which that is one of the subjects that we, that we teach. Uh, we teach prophetic worship. Uh, we teach prophetic dance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and now, but one of the fascinating things that I'm seeing that God, is, uh, that God has been using you is a different facet of prophetic worship a different facet of prophetic dance uh, or, or prophetic worship. But, um, and, and that's, that's really, really exciting. It's really exciting to see that you came to uh, the School of the Prophets mm-hmm. not really clear on who you were. Absolutely. You, you stuck in there. You, you stayed with it until God began to birth in you that anointing to fulfill the call, you identified your assignment. Mm-hmm. You've identified your call, your assignment, and your anointing. And at that point, your pastor released you. Yep. And now you're fulfilling yep. the call of God that is upon your life. Mm-hmm. And it all started right here. Right here at the School of the Prophets. You taught us about uh, the four areas, the basic. Prophetic, basic, prophetic, prophetic ministry. Um, um, prophetic gifting? Yep, prophetic gifting and the office. And the office. And, I, you know, I come to find out and know that, that I'm called to the office. Uh-huh. You know, God let me know that. He told me I had to become an empty vessel. He said you had to become an empty, empty vessel. Empty vessel for him to use. Wow. And I said, yes, Lord. You know? And it's been a steady, you know, birthing and growth waiting, learning to wait on God, learning to move as <coughs> he moves. And it's all attributed to right here. This has been stability for me. I still hear your voice. You, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I hear your voice a lot when I'm going through things uh-huh. and about to face things. I, it comes back up. It got so down into me, it comes back up and it keep, it's keeping me. Uh-huh. I even came back, I think, maybe three years ago. Yeah, I remember. To, to the, um, when you were teaching about Athalaya, you know, at that time. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm I'm really going to try to work my schedule to come back next week. Because I have you to know, stay connected. That, that's absolutely right. And that, and that is very, very wise to do. Speaking of Athaliah, uh, I believe that is in this book here that we actually, that we actually, talk, uh, that we actually talk about uh, the spirit of Athaliah. And... Uh, and one of the things that I remember very specifically that we taught about that, and in this book is uh, 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 the 21st Century Prophet. This is one of our newer books, uh, which came from a few classes back. We have a we have a, a a kit that we actually that we have developed out of this book. So this entire class is available in kit form, uh, where, where a person could get the book. They can get the DVDs or the CDs and actually go through that training that we actually did. Now, so we, so we talked about the spirit of Athaliah, mm-hmm. uh, the anointing killer. Yes. Uh, and what, when we come to understand that, 
See, it's, it's understanding that, that that assists you with the process of not dying in the wilderness, yeah. which, is a, which is really our assignment. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people do School of the Prophets, different things like that, but they can teach on the prophetic, but they can't, they, they can't assist you with moving from, uh, moving from level to level to level yes, exactly. to make sure that you don't die in the wilderness. See, our assignment is to make sure mm -hmm. that you don't die in the wilderness and making sure that you come to a point where you fulfill the call of God that's upon your life. Mm -hmm. So our job is to make sure that we see exactly what God is doing on the inside of you and then bringing you to this Absolutely. next place, Absolutely. this next place of purpose, next place of destiny, yes. next yes. place of fulfillment in God yes. to show you the thing that God, sh that God spoke in you all the way back then in, in 2000 is very evident and now it's manifesting today. Amen. Now won't you won't you take a couple of minutes and just talk to us about uh, what you're actually doing now? What is it that you're doing now? What does this ministry look like that you're part of, that you're uh, well not just part of, you're actually heading this ministry? Yes, yes I am. Um, I teach prophetic worship with the understanding of Now first of all, what's the name of the ministry? A place for Hashem Ministries. God gave me the name. He sovereignly said to call what he called me to do. A place for Hashem. A Hashem, Hashem. is the Hebrew name okay. for the name. For the so, name. So it's a place for the name. <laughs> I love it. And he said, if you make a place for me in the scriptures, wow. I will come and rest there. Wow. So... He gives me prophetic downloads, uh -huh. how to set prophetic scenes. Uh -huh. I use the throne, I use the lions, I use the lambs, I use the flags, the banners, different colors of material to create a prophetic atmosphere so that when people come in, because I do it for him and not the people, right. he comes and he rests. Literally, he descends and he rests right yes. there. And when they come in the room, sometimes before they even get in the room, you can feel his, his it's like he's oozing his presence down the hall. And people have felt they're walking down the hall, mm -hmm. they, you know, on the stairway. It's just that powerful, you know. And they come in to come to learn how to worship him, the biblical pattern way, mm -hmm. you know. They come to prostrate, learn how to prostrate. To lay yourself down, to humble yourself. We take off our shoes because it's a, it's holy ground that you're coming on. Yes, yes. You know, and I teach them, you know, their Hebraic roots. You know, how we are grafted in to the Jewish nation. Uh -huh. We don't support the root. The root support us. That's right. And I'm finding a lot of people don't understand about the feast. God's appointed times, he calls them the Moedim. His mm -hmm. appointed times that he comes to meet with man. And showing them all that. And people come, they get healed. It's a deliverance ministry. And all of this, again, it burst out right here. Right wow. here. I remember when you spun me around on the first graduation, you said, the spin is over. Mm -hmm. You know, and that meant I didn't have to look nowhere no more because this is who you are. Yes, you know? yes. And you told me God called me to stand in hard places. Mm -hmm. And he has, because that's where I stand. I battle, I mean, literally battle hard places all the time, but he's given me the grace and the ability to go through and walk with wow. people. And literally, you know, sometimes I let people come to my home, and I sit up all night with them. Just last night, I went to a person's home. She's struggling with, with for her sexuality and stuff. So I went there, you know, and prayed with her, had her pack up all of her boy stuff, took it out of the house, dumped it in the trash, Mm -hmm. I'm lawning her and everything. It's stuff like that that he called me to do. Wow. And yes. he's given me this like a mothering, uh, a nurturing, caring way. Mm -hmm. You know, when people come, they just draw to the anointing and they see me as mom. All of them come and call me mom. You know, wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, how old they are, they just see it, you know. And, you know, and I'm just glad that I heard the call and that I came. I got the training. I got connected to understand what a prophet is and, and as a 
a, a, a prophet called to the office, you know, how to do the, you know, to give the direction, how to do it, when to do it, when not to do it, mm -hmm. you know, how to, how to, how to do those things, you know, and, and, and a pull, and now, like, you pulled it out of me, I'm pulling it out of them. All I'm right. pulling their destiny out. I'm pulling the calls out of them. The same, the same way, and it all started here. Wow, and it all started here. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is tremendously exciting. It's yeah. exciting what God is doing. What exciting what God has done, yeah. and now you heard it for your, uh, for yourself, folks. This is uh, Prophet Joan Rivera, and God has uh, God has tremendously blessed her life, blessed her to move in the things of God. She pursued her call. She came to the school of the prophets in 2000. Now here we are in 2013 where the fulfillment of God is, is in blossom. Now, it's not fully to the degree that it's going to come mm -hmm. because, there's, because there's so much more that God desired to do on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And God said that you, have, that, that you have not even scraped the bottom of the barrel yet. You have, you, there's more that he's requiring of you in this next season, in this next time that you're coming into. There's more, glory to God, that, is, uh, uh, that he's now pulling out of you because you've obeyed God in, in prior times. You've obeyed God. You've done what he's asked you to do. You've sown seed. You've, you've given your heart. Glory to God. And now it's manifestation time. And so now, the next days, glory to God, of this ministry that you have birthed, glory to God, it's going to, it's going to, be, a, it's going to be a ministry that will function pretty much like what God told us. He says it will be repairs of the breach, restorers of paths to dwell in. So this ministry, glory to God, will restore paths for people to dwell in. I'm excited about what God is doing, and this is this is one uh, individual among many many uh, students that thousands of students now that have come out of uh, 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 the School of the Prophets, hosted by Bishop Iris Walker Ministries, formerly known as Another Touch of Glory Ministries, and we're excited about what God has done, what God is doing. Glory to God. We have had uh, books that have uh, been birthed right out of this. I've already told you about the uh, 21st Century Prophet. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that you've enjoyed in some of the other classes, uh, uh, Prophet, is that uh, the Father-Son Encounter, we've talked about the Father-Son Encounter. Uh, we have embraced Father-Son Relationship, where the Father makes deposits in the sons and daughters. That's spiritual father-son daughter relationship. And I'm excited because God uh, have a desire to bring each and every one of us into this next place. But we have to make sure that we are joining in with what God is doing, the, uh, the Lord's way, and making sure that we just absolutely understand and that we surrender like Prophet Joan did she surrendered to the call of God. She surrendered to what God was saying. Even when she didn't understand it, she knew that she could get what she needed right from this place. And so we're excited about what God is doing. We're excited about your life, and we know that your life can be changed as well. This is Bishop R.S. Walker, glory to God, letting you know that God loves you, and we love you, God. He really is in control. Bless you now. Well, praise the Lord. My name is Bishop Boris Walker, uh, Senior Prophet of Another Touch of Glory. 
School of the Prophets. And uh, I want to introduce you to something that I think has been uh, a very powerful tool that has changed the lives of many people. And as we began uh, years upon years ago, uh, doing prophetic training and engaging in something that has been instrumental in launching people into destiny, giving people an understanding of what a prophet is, uh, foundational teaching uh, on prophetic ministry. Uh, we talk about the prophet and how the prophet develops from season to season. We talk about the wilderness, uh, the wilderness experience that a prophet actually goes through. And as we begin the process of dealing with prophets and uh, prophetic people all over the all over the world, actually, uh, we are finding that people are developing and launching forward in uh, what God has actually called them to do. And one of the things that we have seen in a major way is that God's hand comes on them to accomplish things. Uh, on a supernatural, in a supernatural uh, realm. And as we engage in training from city to city, state to state, carrying the school of the prophets in such places as Baltimore, Maryland, uh, Wilson, North Carolina, Rocky Mount, North Carolina, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, Crestview, Florida, uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and the list really does go on and on and on. Some of the training that we actually do is uh, very, very powerful training and, and extends from city to city, from state to state. Uh, we have in-house, we have in-house training, but we're training right here in Waldorf on our main campus. But then also we have uh, training where we're engaged really in internet training, online training, that's live online training, and we're looking forward to you being part of this.